Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at our current disturbances that are there across the Eastern Pacific as well as Atlantic Basin. And we're also going to be taking a look at uh, conditions that are present, the possibilities for development in the future, and we'll also take a look at what has happened this hurricane season thus far. And so before I go into details... <music> Alright, so let us start off with our disturbance over in the Eastern Pacific. So as of right now, it is highlighted in red, which means the chance is high. So we have that X to show that low pressure area. And so when it moves uh, into that shaded red region, that is where we could see some development of this. And as of right now, it is given a high 80% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next 5 days and a 40% chance during the next 48 hours. And so it is possible that probably by the week, weekend going into early next week we will have this becoming a depression and then eventually probably a name storm and so once favorable conditions are going to persist after that point then we will inevitably have some intensification of this and so the good news is that it is likely to parallel the coast of Mexico but there is something interesting we're seeing a slight curve in the track uh, so could it make its way into Mexico so it's kind of too early to tell but we will wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome and as time goes by we'll see the best possibilities of this system here but as of right now it is definitely given a high chance to develop and probably by the end of this week going into early next week we will have this becoming a depression potentially a named storm and if it does achieve tropical storm status it will occur the name pamela and so now let's hop over into the Atlantic. And so here we have this disturbance. Uh, it is a lone disturbance there. We don't have any more that is identified by the National Hurricane Center as of now. And so it is currently located off the coast of the Carolinas. And as of right now, there is a 30% chance that we could potentially have some development taking place off this. So we're seeing here that the chance is slightly higher than what it was. It was all the way down to 10% at one point, but this disturbance has been here for for quite a while and so now we have the chance slightly increasing for potential development of this and uh this is likely to potentially bring some minor impacts to portions of the Carolinas, so probably some rainfall now and then, as well as some gusty winds, especially near coastal areas. So if you're there, guys, you want to be aware of that potential. And so this really has limited time, because after around the next two days or so, then it is likely that uh, things are going to get unfavorable for this to develop. So it has limited time out there, but we will see what is going to be happening during the next couple of days and so if this potentially uh, manages to develop and become a storm then it will occur the name wanda and become that system that acquires the final name on the normal list of names for this hurricane season and so now let's go ahead and take a look at current conditions that are present so first up is the wind shear map and so we have the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear we have the green that means favorable shear that is what accommodates our tropical cyclones to develop we have the yellow that means neutral which means won't really impact our systems but red means unfavorable and that is what prevents uh, any intensification or development of our systems because this uh, is strong shear that usually cut off the thunderstorms associated with our systems and so we see that we have mainly unfavorable shear extending across most of the region so this is a significant factor uh, why we're not having any more disturbances being out there because it's like conditions are a little too hostile to really accommodate any uh, tropical cyclones as of right now and so now let's go ahead and take a look at the saharan dust and so the different colors indicates how dense the dust is so we have the light yellow shade that indicates that it is not a whole lot of dust that's present but as we head to the dark orange and that red shade that means there is a lot of dust in the region and that is what prevents tropical development because it is dry air and dry air inhibits moisture and moisture is what our tropical cyclones need tropical cyclones need warmth and moisture so without uh, any of those factors we won't see any development taking place so we do have some saharan dust present in the main development region and also in the northeastern caribbean and some 
a small pocket of dust is making its way across the central Caribbean. So as you're seeing, it is mainly that yellow shade, which means that it is not a lot of dust that is there. So it is not going to be bringing any significant impacts. But in Jamaica, there might be some times when we see hazy skies, and but nothing significant is really anticipated as of right now. And so guys, it has been a busy hurricane season and uh, we just have one name left to be used. So is the disturbance of the Carolinas designated as Invest 92L going to achieve that status? So there is the possibility, but again, there is limited time. So let's take a look at the map of our tracks of our system so far this season. And we have seen here that things were pretty active, especially in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico and also off the east coast of the U.S. So our strongest storm as of right now is Sam and before Sam it was Ida. So Ida was a category 4 with winds of 150 miles per hour and a minimum pressure of 929 millibars. And so it, it, it was rated as the strongest storm of the season. It brought some devastating impacts to portions of the Gulf Coast and also when the remnants made their way up to the northeast there was extensive flooding especially in New York. So Ida was definitely a monstrous cyclone and then after Ida uh, we had our next strongest storm which was Sam and so Sam fortunately did not bring impacts to anywhere really while it was the strongest storm of the season. It was slightly stronger than Ida, winds were 155 miles per hour but it had a pressure same as that of Ida which was 929 millibars and so guys it is likely that uh, we won't have any more major cyclones this hurricane season but again things just need to be conducive for just the right time for us to have some significant development and so we really have to wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome for the rest of the hurricane season and so typically in the month of October here is our area of development usually in the uh, Western Caribbean systems might make their way up to the Gulf Coast or mainly over into the East Coast or just move parallel in the east coast of the u.s and in the month of november we generally have systems emerge from the south caribbean and make their way up to the north and move out into the open atlantic so this is not to say that we won't have systems anywhere else but it's just that this is just a typical area where you would expect development and so guys we have to wait and see what's going to be happening during the next couple of weeks as this hurricane season comes to a close and hopefully things do not surprise us as time goes by but of course I will keep you updated as time goes on and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question I will try to respond as best and since I can and just remember to always be with wise.